Hey guys, welcome to Let's Talk Algorithm. This is Venkatesh, and today we'll be solving the problem friend circles. It's, it's a popular question. It's been asked in a lot of companies: Two Sigma, LinkedIn, Bloomberg, Microsoft. All right. Um, let's look at the problem statement first. There are n students in class. In a class, some of them are friends, while some are not. Their friendship is transitive in nature. That is, A to B, B to C, then A to A to C are friends. Given a n star n matrix, m representing the friend relationship between students i in the class. If m of j i j is equal to one, then i and j students are direct friends with each other. Otherwise, not. So, if basically if there is i j is one, then um, matrix of i j is one, then i and j are friends. But there are, there is also transitive friendship. So, what the question is asking is. You have not output the total number of friend circles among the all students. So, given a matrix like this, and we have to give a count of a total number of friend circles among all students. So, let's take an example here. So, given this, um, let's say you know the indexes are zero, one, two, and zero, one, two. As you can see, given n cross n matrix, so always the length and breadth are equal. Uh, you don't have to worry about uh, different length and breadth of the matrix. So in the grid, if you see, there is a, a 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 2. So these, these will be always like 1. If you look at the uh, node, n is in the range of 1 to 2 will 100 m of i i is, o, is equal to 1 for all students so you don't have to worry about it you don't have to count this and m of i i i is equal to 1 then m of j i equal to 1 sorry so, if, so basically if i mean if i is friend to j i if i i and j are in the same friend circle i mean the opposite is also true so you don't have to worry about uh, con counting the j i relationship so it is a very straightforward question if not for the fact that they were also asking to you know um, ask us to check for transitive relationships so by the you know just by looking at the input and output I actually kind of uh, thought this is very similar question to the count of the counting islands basically you know counting the number of islands in a given grid or array but it's not so let's see the input and output so i you, you don't have to ca count i i so let's look at 0 1 0 1 yeah there is a 1 so um, 0 and 1 are in the are in a friend, cir friend circle so you don't have to worry about 1 0 which is also has 1 apparently so you don't have to worry about 0 0 and 1 1 so if you look at 0 1 com 0 comma 1 or 1 comma 0 this is one friendship circle and if you see 2 2 I mean everyone is their own friendship circle so 1 so total count of friendship friendship circles is 2 so a let one part is a little confusing here so the note says m of i i equal to 1 for all students but in the description the second student himself is in a friend circle so returns to so you would want to count a student uh, a single student friend circle only if the student is not present in any other friend circle right so that is one key point for you um, figure out how to find like find an efficient algorithm so the one way I see it is um, you basically start with one friend look at all his uh, you know other friends uh, relationship with other friends like let's say 0 to 1 0 to 1 yes they have a friendship so yes yeah, so you could add 1 to the count count is 1 and then what you want to do is you can start at 1 and look at all further friendships so if you can reach from uh, 0 to 1 then you're going to check if you can if you can reach from 1 to other places so um, we do this because 
we consider transitive friends friendship as like uh, one friend one friend circle you do this so that you don't count so what you're going to do is either you can use a i mean when you do D dfs you can use a an, uh, an array or something you know or, or a set saying seen uh, that you visited certain index but if you don't want that you can just modify the existing input so starting from one you try to see where all uh, what all indexes you can go to and then uh, you're going to mark them zero so for every index start you'll only return one no matter how many places you can reach uh, you, you'll only return one but what you're going to do is every time you reach a certain place you're going to mark it uh, as zero so let's say you started with zero 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 um, you can mark it zero 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 you, you watch you can reach zero one that's cool um, we'll make count one here but we'll mark it zero so since we reached one we'll go to index one from on the depth first search one one mark it zero and um, sorry one zero um, mark it zero and one one you can mark it zero So you can see uh, you, you don't have to go here because it's not one eventually you will come to two so you you'll check two oh two one and two two and two two is one so you count you return one so let's write a quick algorithm which covers all these cases we need count so let's initialize the integer count and we have to start with the first index and then go length of m until length of m what we need is a helper function which does the dfs so we need the integer array or the grid and you need way to start which index to start so once you're here check if m of i i is equal to zero basically that you visited that index if it is zero then just return zero also we have to return integer here so let's add an integer and again now now that you visited this index mark it as zero so the next time you don't you don't visit the index again and once you're here uh, what you're going to do is starting from that in index you will again try to reach all the other indexes you can go to so j less than length of m we don't have to do m of 0 here so if m of i j is equal to 1 what you're going to do is you just mark m of i j 0 And you can also mark m of j i zero because it doesn't make sense for us to count it again so we'll mark it zero and what you're going to do is uh, you will start at m you'll start it again j and then visit all other possible indexes so at the end of the dfs you'll return one so what you're doing is and we can call here count plus is equal to dfs of m comma i you finally return count so this is uh, the important part, the crux of the whole DFS. If you see, uh, what we are doing here is, one second. So what you're do, what we are doing here is, we check if we already have been to certain index. If we if we not, if we haven't visited certain index, then we mark it, and then from that index, you you will see what all the other possible indexes you can visit. And see if there is a, a friendship circle I mean if there's a friendship between two indexes if it is then you mark them zero and then you visit uh, that index so let's say you start at zero you visit one I mean you see one then you do DFS to one and then you from one if you find like there's a friendship to two you do a DFS to two so at each friend from each friend you will see all the other friends you can visit let's run if it works 
yeah, small syntax error because we didn't comment this right already ran so your based on the input they gave us uh, the output seems to match let's run the basically let's submit the code all right it's accepted 28 milliseconds and it beats 100% of the Golang submissions it's a straightforward DFS uh, we don't have to worry much just mark every um, index or every friend you've already visited if you don't want to change the like in the interview if you were asked not to modify the existing input you can always use a something like scene uh, an array which you know remembers all the indexes you've already visited all right um, if you have any questions please feel free to post a comment and please subscribe to the channel if you like the videos thank you